Again, complete chaos. All right, there we go. That's a little easier on the eyes. Yes! Ah, that sounds like a Porter Robinson song. I love it. In under three minutes, we have exported 120 loops. Cynthia in the background. Oh, nice. Hey guys, what is going on? My name is Virtual Right, and I've got good news for you today. So news number one is my new sample pack, Heavy Bass Design Volume 3, is out on Splice, which you might have already heard about. And I messed something up there. There are four samples in this pack, which contains 1,003 samples, so there's a lot in there, but I think at least four have appeared in previous packs of mine. I think in Spicy Rhythm Drums 2 and Heavy Bass Design 2. And I'm very sorry that can happen. I'm a little unorganized sometimes with so many samples that I make all the time. But this is good news for you because I want to make up for it. So on my Patreon, I'll post a download link to a folder with a bunch of free samples that everyone can download, even if you're not subscribed to my Patreon, totally fine. Because I feel like it's going to be more of a heckmeck to hit up Splice and then remove those four samples or give people exactly four credits back if they've bought my whole pack. I feel like just a big old folder with a bunch of free samples is cool and everybody likes that. And then the next cool thing, and this is kind of what I want to talk about today, is I have been working on some Ableton stock device using melody and chord generators. So I'm basically just using the MIDI effects in Ableton and link them together in a specific way to generate chord progressions and melodies for you and it sounds really good now. And I want to show you a little bit how that works and how you can make your own. And of course the things I show in this video will also be available for the Patreons. Furthermore, number three, uh, Patreon now allows people to make a little shop page on their on their site. And this would actually be a perfect place where I could then put up all my audio effect racks and all my MIDI effect racks and all like the generative weird random effects. Also the serum presets and serum wavetables just like organized into that shop. So if you are already subscribed to my Patreon, it doesn't matter which tier you've picked, those will be available for free to you. But if you're not subscribed, you can just get my stuff like those racks and presets and everything without having to commit to a monthly subscription. So I feel like that'll just make it easier for people who just want all the effect racks or all the presets and just like get them in one go. And then maybe I'll have them be like, I don't know, $5 for serum presets, $10 for all those uh, Ableton racks or something. I'll figure out some pricing that kind of makes sense. I guess if you wanted to get everything that I'll put in the shop together, it would be cheaper for you to subscribe then download it all from the shop for free, then unsubscribe again, which I'm totally fine with. If you want to do that, that's a bunch of extra work, but if it saves you some money, totally fine. I feel like if there's this little loophole, it's kind of worth, like I kind of want to keep this loophole as a possibility for you where if you put in a little bit more work, you will get the stuff cheaper, but whatever. And lastly, I am currently in the midst of writing an album and I got to focus on that. So this long video here will be the last long video for a while, I'd say a couple months. And I'll keep you updated on my Patreon and sometimes I'll post a little tiny thing here or something or just like a sh short little one minute video or something. But I just wanted to let you all know that I'll be working on music. Um, I won't be posting that many videos in the next couple of months. And if you are subscribed to my Patreon, I don't want to like hold you hostage. You can unsubscribe whenever you want. I just thought I'd let you know in advance that there isn't going to be that much content for the next few months. With all of that out of the way, let's get into today's topic. All right, so I've been experimenting with different ways to randomly generate melodies and chord progressions inside Ableton. So to start with here, I have a serum that's just set to an init saw and I rolled off the tops a bit so it doesn't get annoying that fast. And if we press a note, we hear it, but we could have the note that we play turned into a random note with, for example, the random device in the MIDI effects. This lets you choose a certain amount of chance. And if, for example, we set this to 50%, now there would be a 50% chance of, instead of the note that we play, it would play uh, a note up to 12 semitones above it. So I'm just hitting a C over and over again, and we're just getting some nonsense out of this. But I'm lazy. I don't want to keep hitting the same note over and over. We could have an arpeggiator do that for us. So let's throw in an arpeggiator before this. Um, just keep it the distance, just keep this all to zero, no steps. I'm gonna leave it on 16th notes. And now if I hold down the C, half the time we're getting the C, the other half of the time we're getting a random note up to 12 semitones above. If we increase the chance to 100%, it's just gonna be complete nonsense. 
but sometimes even complete nonsense can be cool. You could now put something like pitch map or retune behind this and sort of have this turned into a more beautiful and like locked into a scale type melody. But we don't need to do that. We can use the scale MIDI effect and maybe put that after the randomizer. And then if we set this to something like a uh, C minor pentatonic, I'm gonna play an octave higher. Suddenly these random notes kind of make a little more sense and immediately if we add a little echo it just sounds nice. I might keep the echo on, but I'll turn the mix down a bit just so it sounds a little bit nicer. If you don't want a random output though, we could turn this off and instead and instead use this uh, step control here in the arpeggiator. So that's going to add an additional step to each note that you put in. In this case, if I just hold down like a C2 or a C3, it's going to add seven steps. And for each step, it's going to go up three semitones. And you can kind of see that here. Maybe if we do something like five. Interesting. What if? What about something like one? But you kind of see where this is going. We now have a repeating melody of some sort. And if you press more than just one note as well, then uh, the arpeggiator is going to give you something cool as well. If we don't use any additional steps and I play like a C and an F, it's like ping-ponging back and forth between those two. But if I do that with some steps active, it plays those two notes that I send into the arpeggiator first, in this case like a C and an F or a C and a G, and then it goes up however many semitones you tell it to go up here, and then it repeats that again, and it repeats it uh, seven times. So that's pretty neat, and if you want to change the key, you can either do that over here, or you could uh, put a MIDI pitch effect after this like right before whatever synth you're triggering and just pitch it up a semitone here. Like for example, I make a lot of dubstep in D-sharp minor recently, so if this is C minor, then plus one, two, three is going to be D-sharp minor. So far, so good. So what do we have to do to get an actual melody out of this? Maybe 16 different notes, played at like 16th note speed, so one bar of notes that are picked at random, but keep repeating every bar. We would basically need something that puts each of those 16 notes maybe on an individual MIDI effects chain and then randomizes the pitch just for that note individually. And then that 16 times, sort of. So how can we achieve that? If we set this arpeggiator to just go up one semitone each time, and we don't have anything on right now, no scale, nothing else, uh, no random, then we just get this kind of chromatic upwards movement, right? So those are eight separate notes that we could sort of grab individually with the pitch MIDI effect. So what this pitch device does is it can transpose the whole shebang up and down for you. But you can set a range down here as well. So you can select which is the lowest note that you want to let through with this device. And from that lowest note, what range do you want this device to have an effect on? And if it's set to block, it won't let through anything else that's not within its range. So let's check one note. Are we getting out of the arpeggiator right now? So if I play a C2, we get C2, C sharp 2, all the way up the, to uh, G, I think. Neat. So I could turn this on um, and set this to C2 and then just have no range at all. Now only the first note should come through. Yup, works. And you can see this green line here shows that this arpeggiator is still outputting notes. But over here you see only one of them is coming through. So let's group this and do this eight times for all those other notes as well. So let's duplicate that. Go up one here to C sharp two. Do it again. D two. Uh, yeah, D sharp two. And four more times. So now if we play a C2, each of those notes ascending towards the G2 should be coming out on these different MIDI tracks. I keep saying MIDI tracks, no, it's a MIDI effects chain. And that works, okay. We can now add another pitch effect at the end of each of these chains and then link the transpose, like that big knob in the middle, to a macro that gets randomized. 
I'm going to make this a little bit easier for us and first use this transpose control to move all of these notes back to the C2. So minus three for you, minus four semitones for you, minus five for you. This will make sense in a second. Minus six over here, minus seven. Did, that, did I mess something up? Yep, works. We're just hearing a C2, but they're going through these individual chains. Now, let's add another pitch device and to link the pitch to macro one, for example. And let's limit the range a little bit, nothing like too crazy, but maybe like negative 24 to positive 24. And now I'm just gonna drag this while holding option and drag it over here to the second chain. That'll just copy it over here. Make sure that second one is mapped to macro two. Next one, you go to macro three. So this is a bit tedious, and I recommend you that if you want to build a bunch of these devices, once you've made like a note splitter of this sort, just save that as its own little MIDI effect rack, and then you can just use it over and over. Uh, let's see where we can go with this. So each of these eight chains now has its own little pitch device at the end, and each of those pitch devices are connected to their own macro. Now we could randomize all of those pitches. Let's see what happens. Again, complete chaos, but it's the same eight chaotic notes in a row. And if we're not happy with that, we could hit random again and get a different set of eight notes. So these are repeating reliably. If we would save this project, it would save the position of these macros, so it would save whatever melody we've generated. And now we can go ahead and maybe add a scalar again. Try it out again. A bit low. So now we have this thing create us a little half a bar melody. If I wanted this melody to be like a bar long, maybe we could change the rate here to eighth notes. Cute. Maybe overall bring the whole thing up an octave. Adorable. If you want to quickly randomize the things that you need to randomize, in this case, for example, the pitches of these eight notes, you can also hit Command K, which enters key mapping mode, and you could click this little RAND button here and maybe press R. Like R isn't used for anything note related, only to like reverse things maybe. So we could link this random button to the R key and then hit Command K again. And now every time I hit R, we just get a new set here. So you don't have to like keep going back to this thing and hit RAND every time you want to like refresh it. All right, so this setup works pretty well, but we have uh, an annoying limitation. Anytime we play a note that isn't a C2 now, uh, it's not gonna work out perfectly. If I hit an E2, we've got a little bit missing at the end. If I play a C1, we don't hear anything at all. So I'm gonna make a little MIDI clip where I'm just gonna hold a C2 note down, but also just to make sure that this works in any scenario, you could take another pitch device, put it before everything else, instead of block mode, set it to fold mode. Now reduce the range to zero and set lowest to C2. Now any note you play, doesn't matter which one, will be folded to a C2 and that's gonna be sent to the arpeggiator. So it doesn't matter what you hold down anymore. It's like holding down an F, a G, a B sharp. B sharp is a C. Um, so cool, that works. We've solved this problem. Another problem is I like the 16th note speed, but I would like to have this fill a whole bar, not just half a bar. So I don't just need eight notes to loop, but 16 notes. And uh, this steps thing here in the arpeggiator only goes up to eight which gives us like nine notes in total. So how do we do that? Here's the solution. We could group that first pitch device here that turns anything that comes in into a C2 and duplicate that and set the second one to a C sharp two. Now I'm gonna just turn everything else off just so you can see what is happening. Whenever I play a note now, we should get two notes right next to each other sent to serum. Yep, works. And no matter what I press, we're getting a C2 and a C sharp two. Why would we want that? Because now we could tell the arpeggiator to, hey, um, do your seven steps again, but jump two semitones every time. And that's gonna look something like this. So now I've got 16 notes and we could expand our little uh, melody generator over here with eight more chains. So let's do that real quick. Let's turn this on again. And yep, we're missing the second half. So I'm just gonna do this again, where we go Command D, up one here, 
down one there, two, 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 three. So this is all folding those notes back to the C2. And last one. All right, let's see what happens. All right, we've got 16 notes coming through, but those second eight notes are just all on the same pitch right now because I duplicated that last chain here. And that pitch device is just linked to only one macro, like this macro is currently connected to a bunch of these. So uh, let's give each of these notes their own macro to randomize the pitch with. So last one, you should go to macro 16, you should go to macro 15, you should go to 14, and so on and so forth. And I know this is a little bit tedious, but this can be quite meditative. Nine, there we go. And now let's hit randomize. Yup, that is a total chaos melody that has 16 different notes now. And now we can turn on the scale again. And since it doesn't matter what MIDI note comes in, uh, the pattern that comes out right now will always end up in C minor. It is useful to just put a pitch device right before the serum or whatever synth you're using so that you can transpose the whole thing up or down. Sounds like the satisfactory game soundtrack. <laughs> So this is already quite useful, but I want to show you like two or three more things that are going to make this even better. First, you might run into some trouble if you don't leave a tiny little gap at the end of the MIDI notes that you just hold down to trigger the arpeggiator with, because sometimes the arpeggiator will mess up and then it'll skip a note or something, just leave like a tiny little gap that should prevent that from happening if you run into that problem. And then uh, second, we could also add a random velocity for each of these notes. So we're gonna make another MIDI effect rack that is basically like this pitch rack, but instead of the pitch devices being randomized, we replace those with velocity devices and randomize the velocities. So I've saved some of these note separation racks already as presets and I'm gonna put them on my Patreon as well. So here we have another rack that just separates those 16 notes into individual chains. Now I can grab a velocity device and let's put that on the first one, set it to fixed maybe, and then this out high knob is gonna determine the velocity of the outcoming note. And yep, we're just gonna do the whole thing again where this goes to macro one. Copy over to the next chain, you go to macro two. Copy over to the next chain, you go to macro three. If someone wants to make some sort of device or program that can speed up this process, please feel free to let me know. <laughs> But on the other hand, once you've done this once, you can just save that as a MIDI effect rack preset. And I think it's good to at least once do this yourself so you know exactly what's going on in here. All right, so now each of these chains has its own velocity device and we can randomize that too. And yes, we can also link that to the same key that randomizes the melody for us or to a different key if you want to randomize them separately from each other. I'm just going to link this to R as well. And then we just got to make sure that whatever patch we're playing here actually reacts to velocity. So in Serum, you got this little velocity thing here in the corner. You can drag this to modulate whatever you want. Uh, right now it's not connected to anything, but if I just play, you see this zipping around here and those are the different velocity values for those different notes. And uh, I'm just gonna put this on the level of oscillator A and then also on the cutoff of the filter a little bit. And let's see what happens. Sweet, that works. That sounds nice. So now we're getting a random set of velocity values and a random set of pitch values. All right, two more things to increase the usefulness of this to astronomical levels. Remember how at the start, I sort of mapped these pitch devices to go between negative 24 and positive 24 for the random note selection. That's like a range of four octaves. I'm gonna make this even wider and put this to like negative 36 and positive 36. So that's gonna be a range of Oops. So that's gonna be a range of six octaves, which does sound a little crazy and it'll make a randomly generated melody sound a little chaotic because it's like jumping up and down so much, but there's a very easy way to limit the range and have control over it. So I'm just start here with this really wide range. Now, that melody is jumping really far up and down. But before our scaler, we can put another pitch device 
and set it to fold. And now if we set this to C2 or C3 and give it a range of plus 11 semitones, so it's spanning a whole octave now. It's limiting those randomized notes to just this one octave. I could move this down if I, by holding like shift and hitting the down arrow, then this goes to C2. Now it's staying on that lower octave. If we increase the range, now it's spanning two octaves. If instead we uh, lower this lowest note, then we're extending it downwards. So I would advise maybe set this to C2 and uh, plus 12 or plus 11, and then put this in a group and link the lowest note control as well as the range control to a macro. We're gonna call this macro range, and then I'm gonna set it so that on minimum macro value, lowest is gonna be on C2 and range is gonna be on like plus 11 or plus 12, whatever you want. And all the way up, this is gonna go down from C2, one, two, three, octaves down, and this is going to go up from plus 12, 1, 2, 3, octaves up. Now I'm going to minimize all these other macros, we don't need to see those, we can even just collapse this whole thing so we just see that macro, and now... And maybe I don't actually want it to ever go that low, so I might keep this at C0 and instead give it a little more range upwards. Sweet, that works really well. Now all the way to the left. We just have it staying like in that octave and somewhere up here is pretty neat too. And if we want the full range, we can get it. And then the last thing is that we can use multiple scalars to actually make something really cool out of this. Because especially if our range is really wide and let's say I also want to add in like a D and then D sharp. So I just wanted like to be a cooler minor scale, not just minor pentatonic. We kind of run into the problem that in the higher registers, in the higher notes, uh, all these like in between notes like the D or maybe the um, maybe like an, a G sharp will sound good and useful. <laughs> But for the lower notes, that doesn't sound quite right, and it's kind of messing everything up and making it sound dissonant. But the scale device also has a range feature. So I could say, um, everything above C3 is allowed to have all these optional tones in there. And yep, the bottom notes sound uh, really chaotic right now. So I'm going to duplicate the scale, and then the previous one, I'm going to set the lowest an octave lower, and set the range to plus 11. And here we're gonna limit it to only like C minor, pentatonic, just like straight up. And let's make another one. And this one goes even lower, another octave down. And in this one, I might even just have it play C, maybe small chance of hitting uh, D sharp, like the minor third, then the fifth up and the seventh, and maybe another one that's even lower, the octave below that, where it's only allowed to hit a C or a G. And just to make sure that I don't accidentally leave out any notes, I'm going to bring this one all the way down and then this one two octaves up so that this spans the entire bottom range up until 35 semitones above a C negative two. Then this is the octave above that, this is the octave above that, and this is everything from C3 upwards. Now let's hit randomize. So now even with the range all the way up, all of these sound pretty okay and useful and they don't really sound like anything's wrong with them. Let's limit the range a little bit and if you feel like it, you could even have this range control be randomized as well every time you hit R. So I'm just gonna link that to that as well, why not? I'm gonna group all these scalars together so that they're not gonna take up that much space because stuff can get uh, pretty chaotic after a while here. I'm gonna minimize this first MIDI rack as well that just turns whatever note we put in into a C2 and a C sharp 2. And then this is our velocity generator and this is our pitch generator. I like to sometimes keep the chain view open so that I can see if it's properly triggering all of these.
and the height of these will vary depending on the velocity that comes out. So don't be surprised if some of these don't light up when you play it back, then probably the velocity was randomly set to really, really low. Now that we've achieved this really cool random melody or random arpeggio generator, we could duplicate this even a couple of times within this same MIDI track. Like let's grab the arpeggiator and then go all the way back over here, right before the last pitch thing that sits before the serum. And then I'm gonna group this and then expand the chain view here. And then I'm just gonna duplicate that. And then one annoying thing is when you duplicate stuff like this, the mapping of your keys to the random buttons here isn't going to be copied as well. You just have to do that again. And here R, here R, and for the range R, done. And maybe for the second one, we could change the speed instead of 16th notes to 8th uh, notes. And this is especially cool because now uh, those 60 notes fill up two bars. So it takes two bars for this generated pattern to repeat and one bar for this generated pattern to repeat. So I'm gonna just turn the solo off so we hear both of them. I'm gonna hit R and hit play. So yes, this is playing these two melodies at once, but they kind of sound like they're just mixed together and it's hard to tell which is which. So we could try and separate them a little bit. So for example, maybe for this faster melody, we could say, hey, don't randomize the range. I'm just gonna click this and hit delete uh, and give this an okay range, like halfway up. But before you go towards the serum, you're gonna go up an octave. So now our 16th note melody. Yeah, maybe a range like this. So this stays in a little bit of a higher register now. And then the lower one, that's on eighth notes. I can, we can also maybe name these so that it's like 16th notes, eighth notes. I mean, know a little bit of what's going on here. And then the lower one, maybe I'll first turn off the randomization for the range here and leave you also pretty low. And then you get a pitch device that brings you down an octave. I might want to put that before all the scales. A little more range. That sounds about right. All right, let's try again. I'm hit R. So it's a little bit easier to tell now which is which. Some adjustments to whatever like synth patch you're triggering with this can also really help. For example, since these all these notes are kind of like very staccato, right? And it's a little bit like, little, sounds a little choppy. We could increase maybe the uh, amplitude to release a little bit. Maybe same for this filter envelope. That ain't too bad. We could even link that, like uh, the decay and the release of both of these envelopes to the velocity maybe. Or maybe just the filter one to the velocity and the amp one not. Let's try both. So lowest velocity will achieve a decay and release of 100 milliseconds and then it just goes up from there. Do the same thing over here. You're on 100, you're on 100, and then velocity is going to like bring you up. And similar to this range control for the notes, you could also put a final velocity device before your instrument and then just adjust the range of allowed velocity values in this. And if you're like, oh, this is, there's a little too much contrast, some of the notes are like a little too loud, some are a little too quiet. You could just bring down the high and bring up the low here a little bit. Or if you want a little more chaos, uh, increase the random value here. Cool, this is still a rather basic setup, but at this point you already get useful results out of this. And I also want to show you how to like quickly export a lot of generated loops like this in different keys all at once so that then you can like multi-track export this project file a couple of times and then within one or two minutes you've generated yourselves about 200 loops and you just got to sift through them and delete the ones that didn't work out.
I'd also recommend just playing around with an arpeggiator and a scaler, like just by themselves, especially with like higher rates on the arpeggiator and turning on some of the steps and then playing around with the distance can be really fun. Like by default, we just get something like, like this out of the arpeggiator now. Which kind of sounds like the Portal 2 game soundtrack, I actually really like that. And if we hold multiple notes, like a fifth or a fourth, this like becomes more complex and takes longer to repeat. And if we use a scaler with this, you could get something interesting like... And obviously trying different play styles in the arpeggiator is also fun, because by default it just goes up, so it'll just play like, if I hold three notes, it'll just play them upwards, you can also do down, then combine that with the steps, you can also do up and down, I'm just gonna hold four notes, so that one, that one, that one, and that one, and all, all four of them, and it'll play all of these like up and down and then go to the next step, which can then be, I don't know, maybe four semitones up. That's kind of cool. Let's speed that up just for fun. And this can obviously also go downwards. If I start by playing something higher, I can go downwards too, that's also cool. Actually, this sounds really fun, I like that. Yeah, add a little echo. And then change this to a square wave for maximum Game Boy feels. Ah, that's really cool. Let's try out different uh, distances here. Oh, that's cool too. And of course, upwards. But that was not at all what I wanted to show you. What I wanted to show you is how to like export a lot of these in different keys at the same time really quickly. I'm just gonna like add one more level of randomization and this is gonna be to the serum patch. And you can go kind of crazy with this as well as much as you want, but I'm just gonna do something simple here for now. I've made a little wave table that just like contains a couple of different waveforms, which are all like just basic synth waveforms, sometimes adding certain overtones. Uh, it's just like two octaves higher because otherwise this didn't work out. So there's like sine waves, sometimes an octave up with some overtones, different square waves, different saw waves. And then we can now maybe just hit configure over here and move the wavetable position. And now we could link that to a macro here. Uh, and maybe just so we have like a little more variety in what type of sounds can come out, I'll do the same to the unison voice amount here and the detune. Link this to macro two, link this to macro three, and maybe there'll be like a chance of a support saw wave that's just always a saw to be mixed in a certain random amount. So I might also have the level of oscillator beat. And now let's link that to macro four. Collapse this a little bit so it looks nicer. And let's just look at this real quick. Like unison voice amount, maybe I don't want it to go like all the way up to 16. Maybe we'll limit this to uh, four. And then the detune amount as well. I only ever want you to maybe like go halfway. So you detune to like 0 0.5 here. I think halfway is already pretty much right. That sounds cool. Uh, the wavetable position, yep, can just go the whole range. And the volume of oscillator B. So actually this makes more sense if we don't map the volume here, but we map you to a macro. The macro lets you go all the way up to like here. This macro gets mapped to our Ableton rack macro number four. And we're gonna have an auxiliary source here, which is gonna be the velocity. All right, let's uh, turn this on and collapse that. And then also link this randomize button to R. Uh, I'm gonna minimize everything else here that we don't need to look at, just so that this is a little bit easier on the eyes. I'm not gonna randomize the range, that's gonna stay the same. All right, all we have to randomize is these two for both chains and the serum sound. So five 
parameters. Sweet. And this last pitch device here basically selects the key that this is going to be playing in. Right now, on like 0 or 12, it's going to be in C minor. If I go up one, that is C sharp minor. All right, so check this out. Your computer might not like this, but this is pretty fun. I'll now name this track C minor. I'm going to duplicate it and name this one C sharp minor. I'm going to move that pitch up one semitone and just link all these random buttons to make R key again. And I'm going to duplicate both of these. And let's have this one be D minor and you D sharp minor. Adjust the pitch device accordingly and link the randomized buttons again to our key R. Looks good. And let's do that again. So the U would be E minor, F minor, F sharp minor, and G minor. Now that would be one, two, three, four. Link all the randoms again. Ooh, I missed some over here. So yeah, I don't like that it doesn't duplicate those key mappings, but if you save this project and reopen it, it remembers that key mapping at least. So we've got G sharp A, A sharp and B left, and I wanna do those downwards because otherwise it's just gonna get like really high like this. This is okay, but I don't want it to go any higher in pitch than that. So we're gonna do the other ones below the C minor. Oh, we're gonna need four more. We're gonna be B minor, A sharp minor, A minor, and G sharp minor. And then B minor going minus one, minus two, minus three here, and minus four. Uh, let's connect all the R's again and make sure I don't leave any out. I'll just give these some nice colors real quick. All right, there we go. That's a little easy on the eyes. I'm gonna turn on the master and just hit play to see what this sounds like. <laughs> kind of cool too. I might, just, I might just export this just to save that. But now, if we hit R, it should randomize all the settings for all of these tracks individually. So I'm gonna hit R. I'm just gonna check. Yep, they all sound pretty different. All right, let's go hit R. And yep, I can see those macros are updating, so it is working. And then let's select all of these tracks, hit Command Shift R for export, and make sure it says selected tracks only up here. I'm gonna hit render as loop because if there's like a little delay tail here or something, it tries to like mix it into the front so that it loops a little more seamlessly. Normalize just because I got no limiter on it and whatever. Yep, wave file 24 bit, export. And the file name up here, I'll just put VR 150 because it's 150 BPM, loop, melodic, randomized, and then after this last underscore, I'm just gonna leave it empty. Now if I hit save, it's gonna export for a second. Ta-da! And then that took like five seconds and we have created 12 different loops. Some sound better, some sound worse. But you could just go ahead, hit R, and do this again. Just make sure maybe we add like a two here behind that word. Two, how many seconds? Three, four, five. Yeah, about five seconds. Randomize again, export, change the two to a three, go. One, two, three, four, five, done. Hit R again. And you can just do that for like a minute or two. I'm just gonna do that like 10 times now. There's definitely something I would still want to change about the serum patches. Maybe I want another macro to be connected to like their decay and release time so that there is a chance of it sometimes not sounding this plucky but like more sustained. But you can be as creative as you want with this and just link all kinds of parameters uh, to be randomized. And I usually try to find a middle ground where it gives me the most variety but still has a high chance of being good when it comes out. Because the more, obviously, the more parameters you start randomizing, the more chaotic it can get, and the higher the chance that it might not sound that good. But it also raises the chance of when it sounds good, it might sound really good. So this is quite a bit of a gamble, but it's fun. I'll do one more time, and then this is version 10. And now, in under three minutes, we have exported 120 loops, and now we just need to go through and weed out the bad ones, or just put the favorites into a new folder. And I also feel like we could definitely do one where the whole thing is like slower, like maybe 120. And then just go again, 
change the 150 to 120, but take it a little bit longer because it's going to be a longer file. And then do like two or three exports like that as well. One more time. And I also kind of want to do one where like all of this is an octave down. Q, U, F, E, the D sharp, and maybe also the D. And maybe also the C sharp, but then the C is like this, this stays. So it's all still in the same key. This is all still fine how it's labeled. And I forgot to select all the tracks before exporting. That's important. Let's do one more. And maybe one more. It's just so fast. It's like, might as well just get a few more results to go through. Okay, let's check out the 120 and then like the last of that 120 batch where it's like pitched down a bit. Some are definitely a little too detuned, like... Almost cool, but it's a little too much. That one's neat. That one's kind of mysterious, I like it. That's just the right amount of detune for that one. That's cute too. Sweet! I'll pick out some favorites and then I'm gonna put those on my Patreon as well. So I've been doing this in a lot of different types of setups for a bunch recently and gotten some really cool results. I'm gonna play you a few and I'll put these on Patreon as well. It'll be like a massive folder, probably like two gigabytes or more, but they just sound like way too cool. So these were some results of a project file where I made a chord progression generator, kind of a background ARP and then a lead melody type thing on top. So there are even more features you could add to make this better. I can't go through all of these because otherwise this is going to be a two-hour video. But I've got like a project file here, for example, where I've exported a bunch of things from. So here I've got one serum doing chords and then two samplers for different melodies. And here, for example, I have used just Ableton sampler and I've loaded 128 different one shots that are just all like tuned to C and it randomly picks one of those to play that melody with so you get a random sound every time then there's also a random note on or off for the 16 notes that are being picked so it might turn note number three number seven and number 12 off or something there's this little variation here where when the melody repeats the second time it repeats you can see these like turn on or off it adds a little bit of a change at the end where like it might go plus three or minus one or minus three in terms of pitch but that all happens before it goes into that scalar part of course so that it always stays in key and then effects wise there's also some cool stuff you can do here for example i have multiple shaper boxes to set up with different time shaper presets that are all like somewhat simple some are a little more complex and then the chain selector decides which of these the melody is going through, or if at all. There's like a 50% chance of it not getting affected by a time shaper at all. And here, I guess I've linked the melodies to R, one melody is linked to R, one melody is linked to four, and the chords are linked to Q. R, Q, and four. So I'm gonna just hit Q, R, and four, and making sure stuff here moves. Okay, all right. Let's see what happens. And the chords sound here in Serum doesn't change too much. That's just a soft little saw. That's really cool. I actually want to turn off the shaper box for this one. Mm -hmm. 
If you then want to go and make a setup like this, where it exports you multiple of these in one go with that multi-track export, it can get a little intense for your computer because you might have these three things with lots of devices on them and then you want to duplicate that 12 times to be able to like have a loop generated in each key. That can be a bit much. I have had my Ableton crash a couple times and I'm still researching methods to make it more efficient, but I'm really happy with a bunch of these results. I'm gonna keep randomizing everything here a couple more times just to show you what the results sound like. Let's do it again. I notice the chords here also have a couple of different things going on where there is a play style that is randomized where it might just trigger them as chords or it might start arpeggiating them up or down in different speeds. And then there's different patterns in which those randomized chords are being triggered. In this section over here, the one note that comes out is gonna be turned into three notes and that's kind of creating that chord voicing. And lastly, also to um, have the notes be more sustained because if you use the arpeggiator to trigger these notes, especially if it's like set to 16th notes or eighth notes, the note that comes out of the arpeggiator is gonna be pretty short. You can control it with this gate knob here, but you can, but 200% is the maximum. So that would be a quarter note if you set it to eighth notes or an eighth note if you set it to 16th notes. But sometimes you just need it to be held down until the next note arrives. So for that, the MIDI device called Note Length is really helpful. Where you can just set it to trigger note on and then click a latch. And it's gonna hold down whatever note comes in until the next note comes in. So that'll make sure that the chord is being held, especially if there's like another arpeggiator here that I want to use to arpeggiate that chord to play it like up or down or something. Because otherwise without this, uh, I can just show you, I'm gonna randomize again and wait for, there we go, that's chord progression going through an arpeggiator at the end. If this note length thing wasn't here, yeah, now it's just triggering it whenever something comes out of this first arpeggiator. And if the gate is super short, it's got a single note, so you kind of need this to create legato in a way. Same here. Could also be cool, and maybe if you want, you could link this to another randomized macro. Actually, that's not too bad. Ah, oh, this is so cute. The sound's so all city. I love it. You are first. Do it one more time. Yes. Ah, this sounds like a Porter Robinson song. I love it. So I've made these in like all kinds of different styles. Let me show you this other one. Oh yeah, and sometimes these take ages to load. So this one was just a different type of approach where I have 16 patterns that are running simultaneously. And each of these is just hitting a single note. So I'm gonna, we're just gonna listen to this, this C minor one here right now. So what I tried here was I made 16 different uh, parallel arpeggiators, which all just pick like a certain pattern length. You can kind of see like this one says pattern length four, so. Oh, there's like a little bit of randomness here. I'm gonna turn that off for now. But so what's happening here is these are all patterns on 16th notes, but with different lengths. And that one triggers every two quarter notes. This one's literally just three sixteenth notes long. So each of these just plays one note and it also picks that note randomly. It then also picks a random sound from this sampler again with all these one shots. And then it just plays them all together in parallel.
and there's like random velocity happening. There's like a width control that just starts spreading them all apart uh, in the stereo field. There's some filter cutoff and pluck control and all kinds of stuff here, random panning as well. So like without any of the panning, like the width being at the center and no random panning. Uh, it's all fairly down the middle and random pan. Well, every time the sampler is triggered for each note that's being played, it picks a random location left, right or somewhere in between. The amount macro brings in more and more of these patterns on top, so if this is all the way up, we have all 16 patterns playing at once. And this is perfect to just make some background loops that are just like there to fill up some space to create some density or just to create a canvas to then play a melody and a chord progression on because this just stays on the one key that it's set to in this case for this track C minor. So to show you how I would use this, let me export this one clip here. Let's do select a track only, but only this one, a renderous loop, normalize here, fine. All right, just load this in here. This was on 120. Let's loop you and just make like a soft saw sub with like some detune and a filter on top. Let's just, I don't want to be super lazy. Let's give you a fifth as well. And now we could just start by trying out a couple of different bass notes below this to sort of start a chord progression idea. Like maybe start on an F and then go up to here. Maybe take off a little bit of the low end on this background loop and we could make like a little chip tune lead on top here just for fun to uh, like try out a melody. I'm gonna do the classic move with the plus 12 here. No, all the way up, one shot, shorten. Add echo and reverb. That's kind of cute. I just want to write that down. Yeah, maybe something like this, and let's just grab a little percussion loop from that new sample pack. Woo! Sample pack plug. Yeah, why not? Let's just stay with the 120 for now and just make it a little quieter too. The bass could also like follow that 16th note rhythm a little bit. Just for fun, I'm gonna drag in one more of uh, the loops we've created earlier. Yeah, maybe just on like plus one octave and on beats mode. I'm just gonna aggressively widen this and I wouldn't be too worried if this gets lost in the mid signal because um, that lead is super mids and if we just have something else like they would be sort of fighting a little bit for a frequency range but if this one is just super wide and this one's super mono that kind of separates them nicely. Uh, 
Ah, so cute. I'm gonna put this project file into the folder on Patreon as well. Little gem. Collect all and save. All right. Cool, all right, I hope this got you inspired to play around with this a little bit yourself. Maybe come up with your own random melody, rhythm, pattern generators, whatever. I think there's still a lot that can be explored here, and by using some of these additional tools to nudge the results into a useful direction, I feel like it's generating some really good, useful stuff compared to like, I don't know, AI melody or chord generators currently. But who knows where those are gonna go. I like this method though, because you can kind of infuse it with your own rules of, hey, don't ever go higher than this note, or move everything that's this low up an octave or only use this certain scale for this part of the keyboard. So I think that's pretty cool. And these two project files that I'm gonna put on Patreon are only Ableton 12 compatible. Same with those MIDI like preset racks that like separate the notes and everything. I'll put those up too. But of course the loops and like all those audio files are gonna work anywhere. And I'm gonna see how I set that up. I will probably because so in the shop on Patreon. You can like sell digital goods and you can say, hey, I just want to upload a up to five gigabyte file. So I can just put all of these loops into a zip archive and put it up there. If you're subscribed to the Patreon, it's going to be free for you anyway. If you are not, it's going to be like, I don't know, $5. Plus then there's going to be the little free pack just to make up for the four samples that were in the new heavy bass design volume three that already were out somewhere else before. Cool. I hope you're having fun with this. Let me know if you make anything like this or if you use these loops in any of your productions. Feel free to tag me, especially on Instagram. I go through my mentions pretty regularly and if I see it, I might repost it. I just love seeing it. So that'll make me very happy and that'll make my day. Thank you all very much. I am just like sort of signing out for a couple months and I'll be working on music. And when once I'm back, I'll probably have learned a lot of new things while making this album and uh, hopefully have something really cool to show you. Um, and with that, I will say goodbye for now and embark on a quest for fire. <laughs> trying, to, trying to find that fire or steal it. Because when you steal fire, you're just making more fire. It like doesn't go away, does it? <laughs>